We have a new plugin out. It's called Retro Film Essentials. It's available for both After Effects and Premiere, and it's a quick way to get those classic filmic looks onto your footage. Here I am in After Effects. I got this dude with a shield all set up, and I'm going to just drag and drop Retro Film Essentials directly onto my footage. Or alternatively, I can create an adjustment layer and drop my Retro Film Essentials plugin onto that adjustment layer. And instantly we can see the default look, which has these awesome realistic hairs. It has some grain, it has some blurring and sharpening, and we get this really cool look. To explore the rest of the plugin, the best way to do that is just to go through the plugin presets. We have the Grindhouse, which is this oversaturated, super bright and poppy style. This one has a lot of damage applied. We have the Silent Film, which has this classic old school framing as a little bit of flicker, the scratches, the hairs. We have World War II, which is extra damaged, super high contrast, really, really beat up footage. You could see a couple of these speckled dirts here. We have the Western preset, which is this wide aspect ratio and this kind of sepia tone color. The eight millimeter classic, 90s grunge, 60s home video. This has to be one of my favorites. It has a little bit of bloom and chromatic aberration. And of course, the iconic damage and 80s vintage. I'll go ahead and choose a silent film for now so I can show off a few more of these features. So if I zoom in here, you could see these lines. These are the scratches. We have some hairs that are being generated and the framing. I'll toggle down the look category in my Retro Film Essentials plugin. And this is where I can control the blur, the sharpening and the color of my footage. For now, I'll decrease the sharpen and sharpen radius to zero and I'll just increase my blur. And you can see that does exactly what you would expect it to. A lot of classic films went through a post sharpening process, which we can recreate here by first blurring and then sharpening the footage. And you can see nothing visually is happening. And that's because our sharpen radius is set to zero. But if I increase this, you'll see that we're now sharpening our footage. If I bump my sharpened radius up real high, you can see we start to get a lot of that high separation contrast between some of these more high contrast areas. In style preset, we can see a couple pre-built styles for different decades. I'll select the 1960s color and we're keeping the rest of the settings that we have set here, but now we're introducing a different color or different look. I can increase the saturation and play with the black levels. So if we bring that down, we get a bit more of that old school look. I think I'll decrease the sharpening a little bit for now because that grain is starting to look a little too sharp to me. And in damage, that's where we can control the overall grain. If I increase this drastically, you can start to really see that grain pattern. I like to keep it around five to seven. If you want, you can also try different blending modes for the grain. Multiply actually looks pretty good. And we can control the overall damage. So the damage amount is the amount of hairs, the amount of dirt, the amount of scratches, just the overall density of the damage. So if I crank this really high, you can see it starts to look pretty insane. So I'll keep this a bit lower for now. The damage frequency is how often we're going to see the damage per frame. So if you want to see it all the time, you can crank it way, way high. And if you want the damage to be a little more intermittent, you can bring it a bit lower. The hair strength controls basically how prominent or how opaque these hairs are. I'll put the hair strength to zero and slowly increase it. And you can see how this really starts to make the hairs look way too opaque. So I usually like something pretty low. Around five to 20 seems like a pretty happy range. Now, if you have really dark footage and you want your hairs to be visible, what you can actually do is drag your hairs into the negative and that's going to make your hairs white. And you can actually do the same with the scratches. So let me invert the scratches. And now I have these white lines. Now the dirt is a little different. We have both white and black dirt. If I bring the dirt level to around zero, you can see it starts to look less opaque. And when I invert it, the black and the white dirt invert or they flip. In lens effects, we can control image shake and the image shake speed. Let me just increase the image shake quite a bit and we'll see the image kind of jittering around a lot. This gives it a bit of that kind of handheld look. Obviously, that's way too extreme. 
The flicker parameter controls basically the exposure flickering frame to frame. If we want the exposure flickering to be more noticeable, we can crank it really high. And if we want it to be more subtle, we can bring it to a low number. And the flicker speed is, of course, how fast that flickering happens. Just so we can visually see it, I'm going to bring the flicker up a little bit higher. Maybe we can reduce the speed. And you can see that exposure shifting. Bloom is basically like a universal glow, and that could just kind of brighten up the overall image. And we have Vignette. If I crank the Vignette really high, we can see what it's doing here. I usually like to just keep the Vignette towards the edges. And then, of course, we have Chromatic Aberration, which splits the RGB channels. Just a little bit of Chromatic Aberration goes a long way. Let's check out Framing. The Framing controls these outer black box frames. If I increase the frame size X and Y to 100, then no framing will be visible. We still have our vignette, so I'm actually going to turn the vignette to zero. So now the framing takes up the entire composition, but you can still see we see a little bit of the black here, a little bit of the rounding in the edges. This comes from the frame radius. I'll put the frame radius to zero for now, and now our image fills up the entire frame. To show off the frame feather feature, I'll hit Ctrl Z a couple times. And let's just zoom in to the edge here. And you can see a little bit of softening happening with the edges of our frame. And that is the frame feather. I can set this to zero and we have this really, really hard edge. And if I increase the frame feather, we can soften it up. I'll put it at zero for now and I'll increase the frame radius to give us a little bit of rounding. And then let's take a look at frame shake. We already discussed the image shake, which adds a handheld look to the footage. But if we want the actual framing to shake as well, as if the film reel is being fed through a misaligned projector, we can play with the frame shake. If I go ahead and play the clip, you can see the frame isn't moving at all. And if I increase the frame shake amount and then hit play, you can see we have this kind of jittering look. Now, I think this footage is looking pretty retro, pretty damaged, but if your footage is ever looking too modern and too clean, we added a one-click solution to deteriorate the quality more rapidly. In the Advanced tab, I can just swap the quality from high to low. And let's zoom in here so you can see it happening again. So this is the high quality and this is the low quality. And this is basically just down resing your footage. Now, the last thing I would suggest you do if you're recreating any retro film look is to change the frame rate. You can either do that by changing your composition frame rate. For example, mine is set to 60. Here, I could just set it to 15, for example. Or alternatively, I can use a plugin called Posterize Time. And I'll just make sure the Posterize Time plugin comes after my retro film essentials. And here I can just adjust the frame rate. And that's how we're able to go from this to this. I hope you enjoyed Retro Film Essentials. This plugin is part of the LaForge suite, where we have tons of other amazing plugins. That's it for today. Make it awesome.